We start our dive on the Rosie at the anchor point for the buoy. 34-35 metres below the surface. Looking up we can see the buoy. The buoy is on the seaward side of the wreck. And as we move into the rear of the wheelhouse, there we can see the rear of the wheelhouse, the edge of the funnel and the mast. And then coming around the foredeck is our dive buddy, Olivia. The Rose is a 30 metre long tugboat built in Bristol, England in 1958. And after an eventful life, she was eventually uh, bought by Captain Morgan Cruises on Malta, who scuttled her as an artificial reef in 1992 as an attraction for the tourist submarine. And here we are at the bow, getting a quick flash from our other buddy John on top of the wheelhouse. <coughs> Usual entry point to get to the wreck is adjacent to the lighthouse at the remains of the old metal pier which has now collapsed into the water. Head out to the west to the edge of the drop off and then it's a further 100 metres. Best way by following the edge of the reef and after 100 metres the reef turns sharply to the right and if you glance then to the left you will see the rosy. And here is John adjacent to the wheelhouse, and in fact moving into the wheelhouse itself. There's a myriad of fish, including many damselfish, which seem to inhabit the wreck. This is a favourite place for tourists to pose and have the photos taken. Now John's moving out of the wheelhouse. Oh, he, he seems to think he's mountaineering. You're supposed to swim, John. Ah, he's going onto the roof of the wheelhouse to torment uh, or play with the fish. And you can see there are plenty of them about. Very tame, well used to divers. As I remarked before, remarkably good visibility. And here we are at the back of the funnel and the mast, moving along to the stern of the vessel. This is the open hold at the rear which originally was filled with white ballast to compensate for the weight of the engine which was removed prior to the vessel being scuttled. But over the intervening years the storms have washed the vast majority of the ballast out of the wreck. It can be interesting to descend into the hold here and look in the various pipes or the ends of the pipes as occasionally Murray eels make their homes in them. The thing to bear in mind of course is while you're inside the wreck deep then you're just uh, 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 using bottom time the same as if you were on the outside. Here's some of the ballast remaining that I mentioned earlier. And that is looking to the stern of the vessel.
The rudder is still in place, the propeller long gone. And off the stern of the, there is the propeller, uh, the rudder rather. And off the stern of the vessel is the engine cover. And then if you follow the uh, valley, you come to the large arch. Which is quite imposing really. And as you can see, it's quite imposing. This white cable is a, or it was white at one time, is a good marker to and from the valley leading um, to the rosy. Now we're at the turning point of our dive and heading back south towards the exit point and the first thing we encounter is the L-shaped swim through. Dark as you enter but as you uh, turn round the bend it opens up again to the daylight. And as we look back, that is where we have exited the L-shaped swim through. And next we come across a rather splendid scorpion fish. Spines raised as a defensive mechanism. They can give you quite a sting. And here is the sea urchin leading on next to the ubiquitous jellyfish whose tentacles I've been stung by on several occasions now obviously not the same one of course but I promise you I'm in no hurry to get stung again this turtle, dead turtle unfortunately was adjacent to the Madonna cave and when we first saw it, it was down towards a small arch further south that had drifted north. As I turn it over, you can see there's no hooks, lines or anything, so whether it died from natural causes or some other reason, I have no idea. And as I turned it over, the top of my glove peeled back and I got stung by one of the fireworms, which smarted for a few days afterwards. Very sad. Just wish I could have shown you a live specimen instead. And here next are a couple of cornets, pipe fish. Quite difficult to spot. And then we raise, rise up into the Madonna cave. Statue of the Madonna being placed here more than 20 years ago now by Amphibian's Dive Club. Quite a bit more than 20 years ago, I'm, I'm not sure of the exact date. But it's quite a feature. Here is Livia closing in on the Dock Height Marker Stone. Originally thought to be Roman origin, but subsequently found to be Victorian. I 
and as you can see it has the Roman numerals 13 and 14 clearly engraved on it and is believed to be from the docks at Valletta it's at the bottom of the drop off leading to the training area And as we rise up back into the training area you can see the increase in the sunlight and the uh, huge variety of fish of all sorts. Various wrasse, parrotfish and many others whose names I've forgotten. What a splendid sight. And here, looking like a giant caterpillar, is the fireworm. Very graceful, but it has quite a sting. And last but not least, this moray eel, adjacent to the exit point. Which now heads for the seawall. Well, that's it, folks. Again, I hope you enjoyed the show.